Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Now, as you know, I'm a fan of running FPP on a Big All Bone Black, a BBB, and a Raspberry Pi. I think it's really great to be able to have it running as a remote for, say, the mega tree in my front yard. So I don't have to run data cables out from a controller. I can just do a, a wireless remote straight out to it and away it goes. The FPP will run as a remote and happy days, off it goes. But we can have trouble sometimes with uh, the connectivity between the Pi or BBB and the main show, back to our wireless access point or router or whatever the internet connectivity is coming from. And a lot of that is caused by the fact that due to the small amount of space on the Pi particularly, the aerials on there for Wi-Fi are not very big and they can easily be subject to interference and blocking. I've got here examples of the Pi 3B+, Plus, the Pi 4 and the Pi 5. And in each case, the antennas are actually built onto the PCB just to the outside of the silver uh, Wi-Fi chip here. So the Wi-Fi chip itself is under the silver case. The antenna here is just to the side of it on the PCB. Now that's all good and well if the Pi is out in the open. Uh, if it's out in the open, there's nothing blocking it, then happy days. Now if we look at this Pi 5 here, for example, we can see it's got the official Pi 5 heatsink and fan. The antenna for the Wi-Fi does sit just outside it, but it's going to be shielding quite a bit of the distance. If, if your main show is over here somewhere, then this is going to get in the way and cause potential problems. Coming this way, we've got the PCIe bus dropping down this ribbon cable to the NVMe base, which I've got sat underneath. So there's potential for blockage there. It really is going to have a hard time getting, getting out and maintaining a good signal. And potentially more importantly, it was going to have difficulties seeing your external uh, access point or Wi-Fi router because of all of this metalwork and activity around it. Now, the quick and easy answer is to buy something like this. This is an external USB Wi-Fi adapter. And I've particularly gone one for one here with a removable antenna. And I'll explain why in just a moment. There we go, that separates. Now this USB Ethernet adapter can plug directly into one of the USB sockets on the Pi. And the reason I went for a removable antenna is because you can then get a small extension cable like this one. Now this is called a reverse polarity SMA or RP SMA cable. This can screw onto my Wi-Fi, USB Wi-Fi adapter. There we go. That goes on there. And then I can run this chassis mounting socket or plug to the edge of my controller box. I can then plug my antenna externally outside of the box to give us the best possible connectivity. Now you may have read some stories about issues with some legacy uh, USB Wi-Fi adapters. Uh, and that's because the underlying operating system, uh, the Raspbian that FPP is based on, have removed some of the legacy drivers. They want all of the, the drivers now to be in the main source code for better support purposes. And that's absolutely fine. Um, I get that. They need to be able to keep things supported. And that's a good thing. But it does mean that some of the older adapters are no longer happy. Now, I did have to do a little search to make sure that I found a USB Wi-Fi adapter with the right chipset to make sure that it works properly. And this one is using what's called the RTL8812 chipset. And that is fully supported by both the Raspbian operating system, which underpins FPP, 
and also by FPP itself. So it'll offer all of the functionality of the onboard Wi-Fi, but with the better antenna, so we can get it connected outside the box for better communications. The main thing to look for there is if you try and stick to that chipset, it offers everything that we could need, including the tethering mode, which a lot of the USB chipsets don't offer, even if they're supported by Raspbian. So let's demonstrate how we get it hooked up and running and a couple of pitfalls that you might find and how we get past them. Here we go, here is our instance of FPP. Now, if I go to status control and network, we can see that we've got ethernet zero, which is my cabled internet of course, and the wireless LAN zero. Now, if I simply plug my USB stick directly in, whilst it's up and running. We can do this hot being USB, we can just plug it in hot. I'm gonna put my antenna on, there we go. It's ready to go. If I now refresh the page here, there we go, we get WLAN zero and WLAN one. So we've got the onboard Pi, uh, the onboard Pi Wi-Fi still working and we have wireless LAN 1 as well, which is our USB adapter. Now at this point, we can configure wireless LAN 1 and we can get it all up and running. But I don't really want the risk of wireless LAN 1 and wireless LAN 0 uh, reversing and without us knowing one evening, it suddenly decides to power up and try and use the onboard instead of our external antenna. So what we need to do is that we need to disable the onboard Wi-Fi. Now we can't currently do that uh, in the FPP GUI. We can, however, use some of the settings at the back of the GUI to jump through to what's called a command line interface. And from there, we can add an entry to one of the setup files of the Pi to tell it not to bring up the Wi-Fi. So let's do that now. So I'm going to go into help and SSH shell. I need to log in as FPP is the user and Falcon is the password. And then I'm going to sudo to act as a super user to give me full admin rights. I'm going to use the text editor called nano, nano, and the file that we need to edit is slash boot slash firmware slash config.txt. And then I'm going to just arrow down all the way to the bottom. And when I get to the bottom, there we go. I need to add a line called DT overlay equals disable hyphen Wi-Fi, enter. And once we've done that, we can do a control X and a Y to save it, enter. And then I can come out of my shell in a box. Yeah, done with that. And now I just need to reboot my Pi. So I'm going to go down to the bottom to reboot and I'm going to reboot. FPP will now shut down and restart. There we go, it just shut down and it's now coming back up. And once it's come back up, we should only have an entry for WLAN 0, which will be our USB adapter. There we go, I've refreshed the page. There we go, we can see that we only have a single entry now for WLAN 0, which is our USB adapter. We can prove that by simply unplugging it. And then if I refresh the page, we've got no wireless LAN interfaces whatsoever. So I can then plug this back in. There we go. And refresh. 
and there we are we have wireless LAN zero so there we are that's how to overcome problems with Wi-Fi connectivity particularly if your Pi is in a box with power supplies maybe a controller in there as well and all manner of other things and you're struggling to get Wi-Fi access to it get yourself an external antenna a small extension cable like this will hook up to your box there we go so I've got a pretend box here that we can then unplug our antenna and we can stick it onto the outside of the box there we go and then connect it up oh there we go so that is now set up externally and here we go so that is now set up externally and is good to go that's going to give us far better connectivity outside of the box than sat inside with the Pi, the power supply controller and every other thing that's generating radio frequency noise now my final little tidbit for you on this one is when you look at these antennas the reception and transmission happens out of the sides of these antennas it doesn't come out of the top doesn't come out of the bottom it comes out of the sides so you want to try and get your antenna in a vertical orientation now this one here is quite useful in that it's got a hinge point here so that we can we could actually fold it we could have it sticking out the side of the box like that and then fold fold it so it sits like so or have it sticking out the top of your box nice and proud and ready for the world so there we are there's our external antenna all set up talking to our wi-fi and we can prove that it's going to work if i click on the interface it says performing wi-fi scan that's one of the more advanced features that's equally operated by this wireless chipset and then i can see in here that we've got a whole raft of different uh, wireless access points that we can get on uh, different wireless networks that we can get on i can see mine i can see uh, next door neighbor both sides from here so this this access point is doing really well so there we go that's covered using an external usb ethernet adapter even though the Pi has Wi-Fi on board. What, what would be good is if it had a little UFL type connector on the Pi itself so that we could just connect an, an external antenna on directly onto it, but they don't have them, so we have to go with the next best thing. I hope you've had a good Halloween and everything has run nicely if you have. If you've encountered problems, don't forget to bookmark my website I'll stick a QR code down here for it right now. If you found something useful, then you can always buy me a coffee to say thank you. You could consider a Patreon. But most importantly, make sure you're subscribed to this channel where we're doing videos every week and we'll continue through to, through to the end of the year. Beginning of the next year, I'm not sure whether I'm going to run a dedicated video every week or we'll try and do a better quality one every couple of weeks, something like that. Do let me know down the bottom what you think. And last but not least, don't forget to follow us on Facebook. Not many updates in there yet, but there will be more coming soon. Have fun, take care, see you on the next one.